it's a brand new year, 2019, and whether you're a resolution setter or not, there's something about the new year that makes us think about fresh starts, possibility, hope. The reality with achieving anything is that it comes down to the little things we do each day, or at least the things that we do the most of. Hi, I'm Katherine O'Brien at happywithbaby.com. And for example, I haven't really been, haven't really mentioned this publicly too much. You might have caught a few Instagram pictures or posts randomly. Um, but I've been working on a book for most of 2018, even prior to that. <laughs> um, but definitely have kind of hunkered down a lot within the last year. And um, and the way I've been doing most of it is I, I do small pieces all the time where I can get 15 minutes in here or there or sometimes an hour or two hours um, and it's that's how I've done most of it is in, with small bits of time now and maybe in some in my dream world I would have um, taken a hiatus from my practice and gone away off to some little um, beach town or in a little cottage in the mountains somewhere and said goodbye to my husband and my kids and just you know, ate, slept, and written my book for a, a month at a time. And I think I could have cranked it out and it would have been done and maybe it wouldn't have been as great, but um, it would have been done and I could be on to my next big thing. But um, that's definitely not an option for me. Um, and in my, and that's just not an option for me or you know, maybe it isn't even for most of us, but maybe it's just a lucky few. Um, and honestly, I don't think I could have done it that way. I, I would have missed my family probably after day two and um, would totally get distracted. And I do much better under pressure than I do when I have lots of time on my hand, quite frankly. And honestly, I think we can fall into a trap with any goal that um, it has to be all or nothing. Um, go big or go home. That we have to wait till everything is ideal till we start working on anything. So for instance, and I know this one because it comes up a lot in my practice and in the moms that I talk to, is like losing baby weight. It's so easy for us to think, okay, I'm gonna start this Monday, this month, this new year, and I'm going to eat clean, and I'm gonna work out at least 30 minutes plus a day, and be back in my bikini body within eight weeks, and then when we're on you know, day one into it, and someone offers us, you know, chocolate cake or our kids don't eat their dinner so then we're eating their leftovers we're like forget it we'll try again next week and then we're disappointed with ourselves but what if instead of trying to do it all at once we made small changes at a time that you took one thing that you were gonna do each week and add that on to it so maybe the first week you're like I'm gonna start drinking more water they say drink eight glasses of water a day or half your body weight in ounces of water. Whatever it is you decide to do, but I'm gonna drink more water each day. And maybe break it down even smaller, where I'm gonna drink a glass of water when I wake up first thing in the morning. Does that feel more realistic and sustainable? Or what if weight loss isn't even what your body is truly asking for right now? Dr. John Gottman, renowned relationship expert of the Gottman Institute, likes to say small things often. I love that phrase, and it's worth putting it on a post-it and hanging on your bathroom mirror, or setting a reminder on your phone that reminds yourself once a day or every other day. Small things often. And this brings me to what I really wanna talk about today with the new year in mind and with John Gottman's motto of small things often in mind. One of the most important questions that I ask all the couples that I see in my practice and in the workshops that I facilitate, what are you going to do for yourself, your partner, and for your baby? Now, I believe this is a question we need to be asking ourselves every day, every week, every month, every year. And this can be, and I know this can seem like a huge ask, we already have so many things we have to do, right? But I cannot stress enough the importance of being intentional about this 
because when we don't, this is where problems can start to form. So let's break it down. And first of all, the, the order is definitely very important. So number one, self. Number two, partner. And number three, baby. Or child, kid, teenager, whatever, wherever you're at in life. This applies to you. And this order probably feels kind of the exact opposite of what is natural or maybe even intuitive. And it might even feel like the opposite of what is right, especially when you're in that new parent, new mom mode. Um, but we've all heard the analogy of putting, we have to put on our own oxygen mask first before we can help anyone else, let alone help our child. So let's start with there. Let's start with taking care of ourselves. And I know this can seem impossible, but it truly is the little things that we do, especially in new parenthood, new motherhood, that it might be things like washing our face and brushing our teeth. Now, even experienced moms can forget to prioritize their bedtime routine and accidentally nod off while putting their kids to bed. Like I am so definitely guilty of that. Um, and recently someone told me that every time you don't wash your face adds seven days to um, your skin. So you look like seven days older than you would have had you washed your face. Um, it's actually been helpful <laughs> um, hearing that to get me to do it. Because even if you one night a week you didn't wash your face, I'd be like a year, as a year of life to your face. So I've been trying to work on that one. Anyways, lighting a candle or bringing in a house plant or even finding some pretty stones um, from outside. Um, science backs me up on this one. Bringing natural elements into our space is good for our mental health. Whether it's a flickering flame or a green greenery or something you found on your favorite trail or on a beach somewhere. If you're gonna bring in a plant, let's be real, something low maintenance, right? As new parents, we don't need things that are another task for us to do, unless it does bring us joy and we enjoy doing it. Um, but whatever you do, don't save the good candles for a special occasion. Um, I'm definitely a big believer in this and making every day special. Um, it's taken me a long time to get to that place, but definitely burn the good candles now and then get some new ones when you run out. Um, the third one is checking in with your breathing. Is it long, deep? slow and smooth or is it short shallow quick and broken up can you slow it down by taking just a couple counts can you pause in between the inhale and the exhale Can you just let out your breath and be the way it is without ch changing it, but just pay attention to it for a minute or two. Now the key to taking care of yourself is simply asking yourself what you're feeling and what you need. Then doing the best you can to meet that need in some way. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's the attention and the prioritization that matters, not doing it perfectly. Did you hear me? It's not doing it perfectly. It's the intention of it. That means taking care of yourself today might simply be forgiving yourself for not being able to give yourself what you need right now but then what are you gonna do tomorrow to give yourself what you need? So number two is taking care of your partner. And now you definitely might be questioning why this one comes before baby. Believe me, I get this a lot. And the reason is simple, but I'm gonna save that for later. So hold tight, okay? First, I just want to explain what I mean by taking care of your partner, because I think that can also make some people a little bit annoyed. Like, I'm taking care of a baby, I don't need to take care of my partner. But taking care of your partner just means doing little things to connect with each other. Again, it's the small 
things often? Do you make every effort to go to bed at the same time? And maybe this isn't every night, but maybe once a week you go to bed at the same time. Now, for me, I go to bed much earlier than my husband because I get up earlier. And plus I need more sleep than he does. But about once a week we go to bed at the same time <laughs> and we lay down and I always say, let's watch a show together. And we turn on a show and within five minutes I'm sound asleep and then he probably reads a book or something like that. But it's the intention of it that matters and it feels good to know that sometimes we do go to bed at the same time. Do you also greet each other when you come home? Um, do you stop what you're doing and look each other in the eye and say, hey, how was your day? And give each other a kiss. Now that doesn't take a lot of time. In fact, it usually takes less than 30 seconds, but it's the intention of noticing each other when you come through the door that can be really important. And when your partner comes home and they need to unload about their day, instead of being annoyed about them always complaining and minimizing it and getting frustrated with them, Maybe you can stop and reframe it as being grateful that you're the person they want to come home and share their day with. Do you notice the efforts that they make at home and at work and acknowledge it? The small things that maybe don't matter and you feel like they should be doing, but acknowledge it and say, hey, I noticed, I noticed you're doing those things. It can make a huge difference too. Do you let them know that when you're asking to sit down at the table together for dinner, that it is you trying to connect with them and so that they can recognize it as that and not as something else and more things and tasks that you're putting on them to do. Now, I also want to explain that taking care of your partner does not mean, it doesn't mean having sex with your partner because you feel like you owe them or that they need it and you're just really not in that space right now. And it doesn't mean doing it all and being the perfect partner and parent, ever. And it doesn't mean avoid avoiding the hard conversations because you don't wanna tarnish what should be a pleasant night or an evening. So now we're down to number three, taking care of baby. And I'm gonna to explain to you why you and your partner come first. It's because when you and your partner are putting your relationship first, and your relationship is healthy and solid, everything with a baby gets so much easier. And I repeat, when you and your partner are okay, the baby will also be okay. This means, and moms, I'm gonna have to call you out on this one for a minute. This means letting dad have his time and his tasks in helping with the baby. And I know this because this is a concern I get from a lot of new parents, is seeing dad struggling or even sometimes mom struggling. Your first inclination is to go and scoop the baby up and take care of it and to say, let me do it. And this is definitely gonna hurt the three of you in the end. For one thing, it's squashing dad's confidence. And I'm gonna use dad because let's say like 95% of my experience is it's usually dad's. It's also not letting him feel bonded with his baby. And for another, it's definitely can be squashing your time for what could potentially be a break for you, which is then further draining your own well. And for another, if dad isn't bonding with baby, there also means that baby isn't bonding with dad. So there's this organization in California called first five California Dot com if you want to check out their website because they have a lot of free resources and they talk about development and they put money towards different programs throughout the state but they have really great commercials and one of their commercials um, that I recently heard on the radio is it says talk read and sing to your kids and I really love that and that's one of the things I think that I has been easier for me to do like I'm not a big reader to my kids. I did when they were little, but my husband actually takes a lot of time to read to them each night. But I am like a big singer. I love to sing to them. I love to sing songs where I insert their names into whatever song um, is on the radio or I make up my own lyrics to them getting out of bed or things like that. And sometimes they rhyme really good and sometimes they're terrible. Sometimes I sing really loud 
and off key and sometimes I sing a little bit better and occasionally my son will say mom you're such a great singer and other times uh, my daughter will tell me to stop because I'm embarrassing myself so you know it goes both ways I think with this is such a good reminder that it doesn't take a lot of time and these are things that we can insert into our day quite easily like you can talk to your baby when you're just doing things like household household chores um, talk to your washing dishes you can tell them what you're washing you can you know talk to them about what's happening it doesn't have to be specific stories or things for them but it's important for them to be around and involved in our daily activities um, you can sing songs you don't have to be a great singer they don't care they just like being sung to most of the time and you can always read stories um, check out the library um, and get books there or there's also at least I know in our neighborhood we seem to have a lot of those like little libraries and there's always different um, you know kid books or you know sometimes older books of course you have to check what's appropriate or not but easy way to find other books to read too so it doesn't have to cost a lot of money what can even be better is when both you and your partner can spend time with baby together and I think it can be so easy for us to just be passing in the breeze as parents, especially if both parents are working. Um, but that time as a family is so important. Can you just take five minutes out of your day for it today? Because as good as these are for baby, I bet these are even better and sweet memories for you and your partner that you will definitely hold on to later. So until next time, you guys, take care. If you're in the Sacramento area and are expecting a new baby soon, or even if you just had one, we'd love if you came and joined us for our upcoming workshop, Mind Yours, Ours, Relationship Survive Guide to Baby's First Year. In this workshop, we dig deeper into issues like this one, but also so much more, like improving your communication skills with your partner, addressing your fears around parenthood, and how it's going to change your life managing visitors and also managing household tasks we even discuss sex and intimacy and what it's really like after baby i co-host this with my husband so you'll definitely get perspectives from both sides of parenthood and it's really a lot of fun if you're not in the sacramento area and this sounds like something you'd be interested in please contact us at happywithbaby.com